would I trust those fish tacos at a Just hotel? roll the dice. I, you know what? At a, ho- at a hotel? Like- I mean, you know, there's water around. Yeah. There's, there's, like, a, there's like a lake. There's mm-hmm. a golf course right there. There's, yeah. There could be fish in those ponds. You can enjoy some delicious walleye fish yeah. tacos straight, straight out, out of, of Lake Huron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of them damn great lakes. Yeah. 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 So I'm buying Nebraska you fish tacos. Fish tacos. I'm going to do some fried catfish. <laughs> I'm going to do some corn, some mashed potatoes and gravy, put it all in tortilla. I'm going to call it Midwest fish taco. <laughs> you're, you're my hero. <laughs> Tiffany, who guys, Tiffany, this is Tiffany's very first time streaming with the Symphony. Chat, please give her a massive, massive welcome. Tiffany, tell us who you are, where people can find you, some of the things you do, and your favorite ingredient or taco topping thing situation that might not be very common. Okay. Um, I'm Tiffany. Um, I do art and things. Um, I am a hot mess tonight. I got a cortisone shot yesterday. I quit smoking four di- four days ago. I'm on oral steroids, so you know I might flip tables. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I am an equal opportunity taco eater. I have not found a taco I don't like. I like uh, fried tofu. I like shrimp tacos. I like El Pastor. I like... Actually, no. Okay, my favorite is Langua. So I do have to say that. What the hell is Langua? Uh, It's beef tongue. Look at her face. Yep. Look at her face. Yep. Look at her face. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> and that's where our show ends for tonight. Thank you so much, guys, for joining in. We hope you enjoy public access and whatever the fuck Langua is. Why did I ask? That was my fault. That was wow. Hey, um, Chris it's Bates, really can you good. go ahead and clip? Th- can you go ahead and clip that? I'll try it for you, babe, with you. But really, is it diced? Is it ground? Um, my favorite is when they um, roast it and then they shred it. So it's really tender. So it's just like shredded beef almost, but super, super tender. They roast I mean, that I've, tongue, Bridget. I've, and they no, I've shred met that some, tongue, some Bridget. tender tongues before. Oh, man. And I'll never turn down a tender tongue. Oh, you put a little bit of that tender tongue in that taco for Bridget. Oh, <laughs> man. I wonder if we can get that at a bar in a Michigan golf course. <laughs> Why did I agree to this? What is this? Oh, God. Uh, Nate, I will cash app, Venmo, or PayPal you if at some point Shredded Tongue comes up in this game in the next five episodes. I'll, I'll send you 20 bucks right now. And so, the second you do it, I will have my phone up and I will send those phones your way. What the fuck well, just happened? If you, look, if you look at the map that I gave you, you can see exactly where it will show up. Just exactly. And that's a, that's a place that uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll be visiting. We're not even out of the intros yet. Like, what is happening today? Tiffany, why, why, babe? Nate? We might need to add another hour on the end of this. Y'all are terrible fucking people. Okay, uh, Nate insisted that I do an introduction. So, hi, my name is Bridget. I own Symphony Entertainment, Gaming, and Arts. You can find me on things that are related to Symphony or at Chaosio. My favorite ingredient, odd thing, situation to put into a taco? Oh. I don't even want to go after, like, tongue. Like... There's nothing that I can say that's going to rival or even sit in the same door as like, let's put something's tongue in a taco. I know, Miranda, there's nothing there. Uh, So I will go in with, um, I've had tacos with kimchi before that were really delicious. There we go. There we go. And uh, Nate, your friend, my friend, our friend, this delicious, terrible situation that is back on the symphony. Please, my love, tell us who you are, where people can find you, some of the things that you do, and your favorite tongue taco situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, Bridget. I'm glad that you got that introduction so we could learn a little bit about you. Um, I'm Nate, <laughs> and I'm your friend Nate on the Discords. Uh, I previously ran a public access one shot for Symphony. I think it was last year, right? Uh, Shit, baby, was, was that in 2023? Yeah, I think it might have been. I think so. Lucky, lucky enough to come back. Um, and I am very, very excited about this cast working with the uh, three of you on this. This is going to be madness and fun. Uh, delightful. Um, I'm a cast member on the old ways. I play uh, regularly, uh, Special Agent Elliot Winters on our Impossible Landscapes campaign. Play a bunch of other characters and guests uh, on other shows and one shots and things over there. Lots of what, like the Haze uh, game that Miranda mentioned. Um, a lot of the 
Um, they came from games or hold a special place in my heart because they are so ridiculous and fun. And so um, there's some of that. Um, a couple other places uh, I'll pop up on podcasts and live streams as well. Love it. Um, been playing games since the 80s. Hey. Been running them since the 90s. Uh, and Bridget, thank you for having me back. Uh, begging me to be back. I know, you know, you that was a verb you use emails wow. over and over. And yeah. I finally couldn't stop saying no. So I had to say yes. So wow. uh, okay. this, is, this is great. <laughs> but, um, so thank you. And you're welcome. I hate my life so much right now. I don't know why I volunteer for this shit. Uh, content warnings have been discussed with the cast and crew. The X card is in play. Xs can be sent via private message in Zoom, which we're looking at now, or you can just visibly X uh, Nate. He will pick up on it. If Nate misses it, it is table responsibility to help protect each other. So if you see it and Nate misses it, stop the play. Let's get everybody on the same page because... You can tell better horror stories when everyone feels safe. Uh, and the other safety tool that we'll be using is the red, yellow, green traffic light method. That can be called by cast. That can be called by chat. Uh, that can be called by my French bulldog as she walks in the room and throws a uh, temper tantrum. It can even be called by Tiffany's nicotine withdrawal. Whatever it is, if it is called, everyone has to do an audible color check. Green, we're good. Uh, yellow, ooh, I don't like it, which means we're not good. Or yeah, or red, which is a hard stop. No, we are not good. Uh, any safety tool that's activated, no judgment is passed. No questions are asked. And without further ado, I'm going to get the hell out of my own way and hand this over to who we came to see, which is our friend, Nate. Oh, thank you. This is public access. Deep Lake, New Mexico, 2004. <sighs> we see a valley. There's a bonfire in the valley. And to one side of the valley, small village. Huts, tents, rocks and sticks. And on the other side of the valley, we see the cave, the darkness from the cave. And... As we huddle around this campfire, here, do you want a story then? Because I got a story for you. Haunts every few generations. It's like a restless comlet. Craves your attention and repeats until it's heard thousands and thousands of years ago before you all start accounting time. Under the merciless gaze of the sun, a tribe lived atop this desert. They revered the sun, celestial mother, but they feared her scorching wrath. And one group, this seems to always happen, one group grew tired of looking for comfort in the summer and defied the decree of the tribe, and they dug. They dug into the forbidden depths around them, out of view of the sun mother. Back then, there were more things waiting for the foolish or the reckless. And those rascals, they dove deep. And they awoke something that should have been left sleeping. They brought horror to this land. The horror lacked form. It hungered for identity. And it twisted the diggers into grotesque echoes of themselves. And as they returned transformed, the tribe faced an insidious corruption spreading like wildfire amongst friends and families. They could not know what they could trust. So the some people, wise yet terribly outmatched, they devised a cunning strategy. They crafted effigies, decoys, mere in their essence, misleading the abominations amongst them. And the bait diverted the creature, halting the theft of their essence, giving them time and an opportunity to bring the Sun Mother's blessings down upon these creatures. And they drove it back into the darkness. And they survived, kind of. They left behind a spectral legacy, a reminder of that fight and the danger they faced. And they also left a reminder, be careful where you dig and it's this voice echoing in your head as you wake up as all three of you wake up at the exact same time your eyes open 
and you're looking up at the ceiling of the rented house on Rodendecker Street where you've been spending the summer. And as maybe you shake off this dream that you had, this dream that you've been having, and start to get up and out of bed and start your day, why don't we uh, understand a little bit more about the people we're going to be spending some time with? And I wonder if we can start with Jordan. Jordan, what do people see when they look at you? So, okay, Jordan's style that I picked for my character is matching sneakers. Out of all the options, I picked matching sneakers this, is this time. And I tried to think about what that would mean to me, early 2000s me. And um, I was very close to going three stripe Adidas. <laughs> oh, I it away. Uh, mm -hmm, yeah, I remember my life back then. <laughs> uh, the envy of the three stripe Adidas. Uh, but I went a little different direction. There we go. I went a little different direction. And I'm going just various pairs of different skate shoes, all like mm. in pretty good condition. Um, but I have like different ones that match different boards. I got your classic Vans. I've got your Chuck Taylors. I've got DCs. I that's what I'm going with is just a lot of pairs of of skate shoes. And um, Jordan Briggs rocks like cargo pants, t-shirt. But what she's really known for are her kicks. And you've been here a few weeks. Three weeks, to be exact. Um, have you done anything with the room? Each of you have your own room. Have you done anything with the room? Decorate? Is there anything to show a little bit of Jordan in the room? Have you mm. kept it plain? Mm -hmm. No, Jordan went to the gas station and bought a number of magazines, which back in like late 90s, early 2000s, you could still get magazines that had posters in them, which were really just pages that you could pull out. And then there were some like yes. double pages you could pull out. Um, so I got some skate magazines, some metal magazines. And so I have hung up my magazine posters to decorate my room with some blue tack. On the you back. got the best that Circle K has to offer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just went in for it with a stack. Just got mm. a stack of them to decorate. And a couple of things. I mean, obviously you brought luggage. A couple of things you brought with you that maybe are significant or precious. Mm -hmm. Um, I almost said two kinds of razor, one being a razor scooter, but I cannot do that to my precious skater. <laughs> I can't do it. So it's Jordan's uh, skateboard and my Motorola razor. Yeah, because I'm hip. You're so got hip. Me, got, me, got me a flip phone. Yeah, Motorola razor, R-A-Z-R, the envy of all. More envy than the three stripe adidas wear very oh. very very new in 2004 that was a sweet phone too uh crystal oaks same thing what others see when they look at you if you've done anything that might show crystal off in the room that you've been staying at for the last three weeks and two things that you brought with you um okay well, Crystal, the style I chose was hoodie under a blazer because mm. she needs pockets. She carries gadgets and gear with her. Um, formerly an empl employee of Voice Dream, which is now T-Mobile at this time. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, so the two things that she mostly carries around is she has an audio recorder and mm. a GPS. She has a few other things in her room, but there's a couple other gadgets and things like that. But she's got, you know, the gear. She's really liking the direction that technology is going. If I remember, your character also brought a whole gang of stuff with you as well. Yes. So it's all technology related. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So I have, yeah, she has her laptop, which doesn't come with her all the time because laptop bags weren't all that big at that time and laptops were not that big mm. um yeah and she's got like up on a shelf two walkie talkies and things like that so and last but certainly not least megan same same questions 
Yeah, so I am Megan uh, Winners. I am a very, very tall African American woman. I think the last time they actually did my height, I was six two, six three. Uh, very lean build, very athletic uh, build. I have half of my head shaved off on this side, and then I've got a mess of curls on the other side that are uh, tipped in green. Most of what's happening in my situation is uh, green. Um, you guys would know that I just left a forestry, a forestry program in Colorado to come down. Uh, I'm looking into getting into forestry, park rangering, something of that nature. For my style, I chose boot cut and bougie. And I had to stop and like, just like Miranda kind of thinks like, how do I embody that? Or what does that mean to me? So for, um, for Megan, uh, I am typically seen in hiking boots, tactical um, cargo pants of some sort. And that's all very functional for wildlife and hiking and trekking. But starting at the waist up becomes a much different picture that doesn't transition. Well, she's usually in, so I'm usually in some type of form fitting top. I am a big fan of the, <laughs> the turtlenecks without a sleeve, the sleeveless turtlenecks or the tank tops or something that's definitely accent, uh, accenting my uh, cleavage. My face is always in full makeup. Um, it's tasteful. It's not overly done, but you can always see that I took the time to actually do my eyelashes out to actually fill in my brows and things of that nature. So there's definitely a boot cut and bougie situation with, uh, with me. Two things that are always with me. I have a water bottle that has a purification uh, device kind of attached on the top of it. But there's stickers all over the water bottle from uh, state parks that I visited. And the water bottle now is out of blue space. <laughs> for me to stack on any stickers, but you can always find room. You know, if you overlap or straddle, it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, and then something else that I always carry with me is my compass. My room, I mean, Nate, I'm not going to be here long, right? Or maybe I am going to be here long. I'm not actually sure how long I'm going to be here. It's really, I move around a lot. It's not worth investing in the status of this room. But still, when you walk in, uh, I have those maps that I have rolled out. <laughs> from like AAA or from the National Park Service or from the local DMV where I have different maps of the area and places that we need to go or explore lining the wall. So it's not intentional to give the room a vibe about me, but like I probably bummed some of the blue, um, uh, what did you just call it? I forgot what it's called. The blue tack? The blue tack. Blue tack. <laughs> uh, from so Jordan. The sign for blue tack apparently. Blue tack. And you put it on things. Right here guys, blue tack. That's all you need to know. Thanks for joining the symphony. Y'all have a great night. Um, I have those all over my wall right now. And they're all stained in some form of coffee or water rings. So if I got this right, we have three sort of somewhere in their 20s women in this apartment. We have a skater. We have a techie. And we have a granola girl. Is that is that right? Mm. That feels accurate. Mm. So you've been at, in your rooms in this rented house? Uh and been in Deep Lake for about three weeks, like I said. Becoming familiar with the area, getting to know some of the locals. Y'all met at an online forum, bonded over your shared history. Each of you being latchkey kids that spent part of your childhood, the 80s and the early 90s in Deep Lake. Uh, latchkey kids. This, I, I've now realized that not everyone has even encountered. Latchkey kids were the kids that basically came home and no parents were home because mm -hmm. in the 80s, late 70s, 80s, uh, mom and dad started to both work, not just mom. And so this nuclear family started to change. And culturally, socially, we didn't really know how to deal with that. So the kids basically took care of themselves. Uh, and as a Gen X person myself, I think it was wonderful. Nothing, no problems, everything great. No downsides, no drawbacks, only positives. So um, this is this is how you grew up, and you spent part of that in Deep Lake. So setting that stage, part of your time in Deep Lake, which is a seriously creepy place, mm. uh, unaccompanied by parents, not watched over by adults, not protected by those who might protect. So you had to deal with things yourself. Uh, that shared history also had another aspect of it. Uh, you were very uh, almost obsessed with. And that's the memory of this quirky public access television program called TV Odyssey. You all remember that. And you found other people on these forums that remembered TV Odyssey that had also been in around Deep Lake around the same time. You decided to spend the summer in Deep Lake trying to get the bottom of the mystery of what happened to TV Odyssey. 
because all of you have this memory of the thing just disappearing. That can't be right. It doesn't make any sense. Thing just doesn't disappear. And now that you've gotten into Deep Lake to try and understand that, you've made no progress in that mystery because no one in town, no one who stayed in Deep Lake remembers TV Odyssey. And sometimes just the question about it gets people riled up. Oh. And you've encountered a, a few odd situations because of that. Uh, oh, public access television. That's another thing. People might not know it. TV stations used to exist, and you as a citizen of that community could just sign up and have a program on TV, and they would let you go, and you would use their set. And So public access TV, locals putting on the TV program they wanted to put on with all of what you would imagine that would be like. No budget, no skill, no history, no education, no experience, just passion and love. And so a lot of great things came out of public access television, but probably a lot more terrible things came out, but that's where we're at. Uh, it is uh, a date in 2004. I'll give you a specific date later, but I don't have it in front of me now, and I don't want to mess anything up. As you are all awake, what do you want to do? Um, I think the first order of business for the day is to make some breakfast tacos. Um, and I think that uh, Jordan would absolutely take that upon herself to start cooking up some eggs, getting some bacon going, getting some food ready for anyone that would like to enjoy some various taco toppings for some breakfast tacos. Um, Crystal would probably pick up her laptop and head down to like the kitchen main area and see who's awake and who's doing what. So, uh, Megan, upon waking up, um, I've already had probably 24 ounces of water before I even got dressed. It's one of those things. As soon as my feet hit the ground, I'm immediately taking in uh, water because hydration is important. Um, I will get dressed in something that's probably borderline inappropriate being that I'm not super close with these individuals that I've reconnected with over the internet. So it's probably some really high shorts and a tank top um, and like fluffy slip on uh, house shoes. Uh, and then I will come down. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm immediately going to start coffee because after hydration, caffeine comes next. That's the natural order of things. Uh, Megan, Megan, um, can you, I got a, the bacon, um, I got to turn, can you put on my get up your ass in the morning and move mix, mix CD? It's, it's right there next to the radio. Thank, yep. thank uh, you. Yep. I've, I've on it. <laughs> okay. So just cooking bacon really stresses me out. You never know when it's done and you overcook it and you undercook it. And I just, I, I'm just really, I got to be in the zone here. No, no, you're good. Let's Thanks. go ahead and get you in the zone then, hon. I twirl around her and then I will uh, go and put on that music. Yeah, Crystal's probably uh, just sighing and looking out the window at all the drab not technology there is around here. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Lots of Southwest America desert. Lots of yellows, lots of browns. Beautiful, but different. And a speedy delivery truck, Crystal, which has just pulled up. And a young man jumps out. He's in the speedy delivery uniform. He's got a faux hawk. He's wearing dark glasses. He's got a package. He runs up, sets it down on the porch, knocks on the door and runs back towards the van. I'm going to jump up and go see what got delivered. And it is a speedy delivery envelope. You can feel that there's something inside. Uh, maybe something about eight inches by five inches, rectangular hmm. and maybe something else. Um, return address doesn't, you don't recognize it. It's addressed to the latch keys. And at your House on Rodenbecker. Hmm. Feels like a floppy disk, though, probably. 
Oh. 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 Sweet. Hope it's Blockbuster. Anyways, I'll <laughs> yeah, I'll rip open the package and put it on the table next to the laptop. See what's in it. And there is. There's a VHS tape. Well, there's a VHS tape case, and there's a letter. The letter's on thick stock. You can see it's a formal business letter. It's got the from and a block and a to and a block, just like they taught you in elementary school. Hmm. You guys want me to read this letter to you guys? Hmm? Oh, what letter? Yeah, that. Yeah, uh, there's a letter. Yeah, that'd be great. And are we the latch keys? Um, I don't know. If we're not, then we can't read it because that's a federal offense, right? Well, I already opened it. It's fine. No one will know. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll look at the letter. I've dropped the letter in our rodeo, our Albert rodeo instance, if you want to grab it there. Uh... I oh. Can see where I can... oh, I got it here. You, you might just scroll it? down. You might just scroll way down. Oh, or I'll move yep. it up. It's oh, the bar, there it yep. is. Okay. I got it. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Oh, so... we all can move the same thing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm from smart. Jenna Holt Esquire, San Diego. <laughs> okay. Uh, Deep Latch, like latch keys. I guess that's us. It's wait. Are we on Escondido? We're not on Escondido Street. No. Uh, no. Ah. You hear a voice echoing across. <laughs> Damn it! And it, it's like a, a crack of thunder. <laughs> The other big street in uh, Deep Lake is Escondido. No. There's two streets. Mm -hmm. There's two streets. Escondido made. and Rodenberg. Okay, we're good. We're I good, had we're a 50 50 chance and I got it wrong. Nope, it's 231 Rodenberg. I don't know what you're. What, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm misreading. I'm sorry. Um. Okay. Let's. Uh, so th this person is uh, requesting help looking for Aaron Brooke. So says, Dear Latchkeys, I'm reaching out to solicit your help regarding my sister Erin Brooke. I was referred to you by Sheriff Hanscom, who gave me your contact information and filled me in on your investigations in Deep Lake. I hope you don't mind me using this name. He said it was what folks in, to in town are calling you. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Um... Aaron was recently engaged in a documentary project in Deep Lake, sponsored by Vista Vision Ventures. The project, titled Echoes in the Sun, Unearthing Deep Lake's Past, aimed to explore the historical and cultural narrative of the region. However, it has come to our attention that the documentary team, including Aaron, has not been in contact for an extended period of time following their visit to a remote location near Deep Lake. Um, okay. It has been established that their last known whereabouts were in a secluded cave in the outskirts of the area. Subsequent to their disappearance, their filming equipment was discovered abandoned and operational, containing footage that is currently under review. Hmm. The nature of their disappearance, coupled with the con content of the recovered footage, raises serious concern. I'll, like, hold out the VHS tape for somebody to put it, find a VCR to put it in. Yeah, I'll Give quickly a... grab it and head that direction towards a little portable TV that has the VCR attached to the screen. Uh, given the circumstances, we believe this situation warrants an investigation beyond the capabilities of the local authorities currently engaged. The complexity surrounding the crew's disappearance, particularly in relation to the unsolved historical en enigmas of Deep Lake, suggests a case of unusual difficulty and sensitivity but the sheriff has no evidence of foul play or that there was even a fight or incident that has reached the limits of his official capacity. Hmm. He was kind enough to forward me to you, however, as I think he is also worried there is more than meets the eye. I respectfully request your expertise and resources to aid the investigation of Aaron's whereabouts and to ensure the comprehensive understanding of the events leading up to the crew's disappearance. Time is critical factor and the swift re resolution of the matter is in fact or is in the best interest of all parties involved i also include a, a daily that aaron has sent me a couple days after she set up deep set up at deep lake i don't have any 
I don't have anything to play on this or play this on and maybe it'll be useful. I'm surprised they are still using this kind of tech in Vista Ventures. Please let me know if you find anything out about my sister. I'm beginning to fear the worst. Sincerely, Jenna Holt. Do you think she was Blair Witched? Is this do you think this is a Blair Witch situation? And uh, then we're gonna get Blair Witch 2 Like the Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2? Well, I mean, I would suggest don't stand in any corners. Okay. I do that, have a camcorder though. Okay, that's a key point of Blair Witch, yeah. Um <laughs> But we don't have enough trees around here. It's all desert true. flatland. I think mm -hmm. I think we might be okay. Okay. Just making sure because it feels very Blair Witch. So I'm just concerned. We just maybe need to keep that on our radar. Radar, but we should probably. Yeah, Megan, you found a. You got it in the VCR. Yeah. So I I've popped the 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 uh cassette tape the VHS uh into the VCR and my finger is waiting to hit the play button. But I'm also kind of like leaning over the device just watching this conversation very patiently. I'm not rushing either of these two individuals as they unpack the Blair Witch. I just have this smile on my face like. They'll get to me when they're ready. And then as soon as Jordan, you know, makes a statement, I was like, is the bacon okay, honey? Oh, shit. And then I run back in to check on the bacon really quick, and I turn off the stove, and I unroll a bunch of paper towels and get the bacon. Okay, I'm, I'm ready now. Yeah, they got, it's a, it'll be crispy. If uh, I hope you like crispy. That's okay. Tacos this morning, right? That's what you said last night? Yep. Yeah, the eggs are on next because they don't take as long to cook. Okay. We'll be, we'll be good. All right. Uh, Crystal, you good? Yeah. No, I mean, we can we can play this. And I, I reach down. what's on this tape. And I hit the play button. I, I push it in until it locks. Mm -hmm. It makes that noise as the... As the, as the thing inside clamps the tape and opens it, the tape starts to... You can hear the tape going through the machine. Um, and this is one of those, you said this is one of those one piece, it's like the smaller TV. Yeah. VCR. Is it silver? It like is silver. Like, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Because I figure if we're in a rented house, they probably didn't spare it, you know, go all mm -hmm. out on like, it's just uh, whatever. They can play DVD or they can play, uh, oh God, DVDs. I need to go back mm -hmm. even further. They can play tapes here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it starts to play the screen flashes quick and then it goes to start playing you see those lines that go across a tv screen when you're playing a video tape a vhs tape and then blue just a blue screen and then in the corner the upper right corner of the screen it's just blinking t-o in that white vhs font mm -hmm. t-o t-o And all of you have heard and know of the legend of these Odyssey tapes. Supposedly, they were re recordings of shows off TV Odyssey. And the legend, which Crystal for sure doesn't believe a word of because it makes no sense. Maybe, I don't know about the other two of you, but the legend is they can only be played at night. And if you try to play them during the day, they never work. Hmm. Megan, when you would push that tape in, you saw it had a um, handwritten label on it. And the label, so, oh, you're pushing the door open? I see you pushing the door open. Yeah, just, I mean, we're here. Mm -hmm. um, and the handwritten label said Affirmations 04. Affirmations 04. And the tape that it came in, the case that it came in, it's just a purple case, no label. There's a triangle sort of logo on the front but no no name no like documentary or tv studio or anything name that labels it beyond that hmm so just allowing it to play out how long do we stay with this this screen with just the to does it seem to be the duration of the tape for as long as you wait. Well, tell me how long you wait. Uh, let's see here. After that 60 second marker, I'm kind of wishing that I had a remote. I don't know where the damn remote is to this device where I can just start like hit the fast forward or the fast forward to after about 
I don't say 90 seconds. I'm going to look up at the other two ladies like, you know, rumor has it that these tapes only work at night. Or at least that was the situation that was going along on some thread online or what they were saying about the Odyssey tapes. And I'm trying to be funny. I'm trying to just fill in the bridge of conversation with all of us, like excitedly looking at this tape that's just blinking a T.O. at us. That would be silly though, right? Like, I mean, I know we've seen some silly things while we've been here talked but that would be real silly that a tape couldn't play like crystal i mean you're into this tech stuff does that make sense like that they can time lock a vhs tape not at all there's no way i mean there's got to be something either wrong with the v8 you know with the player i mean i can't I can't give any other explanation. I mean, we can try it later if we remember, put it on top of the VHS player, but like the fact that we're you think we're gonna see something different later doesn't add up to me. Well, I'm not saying that we are gonna see something different. I'm just more or less regurgitating rumor. But since we're on uh, the impossible, hey Crystal, why don't you tell me what your favorite program was on TV Odyssey? I know you had one. Um, I had a couple. Um, I really liked the, um, the cartoons with just music. Mm, those were fun. You know, yeah. You know, like with the silly animals doing weird things, popping up behind mountains and dancing and all of that. But you yeah. Know. Um, do you remember the episode with like the super elongated bunny that was on a unicycle going from mountain to mountain over a type road? Do you remember that one? And the music was like really this weird upbeat jazz music to it. Um, maybe it sounds a little familiar. Was he like flapping in the breeze, like all long ways? Yep. Absolutely. 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 Jordan, did, did you see that one? Oh yeah. I mean, I watched uh, some of those. I, I mean, my, my favorite was Captain Slapstick, the pirate, but Captain that, Slapstick. But I mean, I watched those some of those the you know, the music cartoon ones too. They're kind of weird, but good to fall asleep to. Honestly, um, I mean, I'd put them on late and just kind of pass out. So I started trying to pick up the the intro music to Captain Slapstick, the pirate. I was like, da 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 da. No, da 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 da. Yeah. To the seas. Uh, but da, da, da. Yeah, it's just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. no one else in town remembers those movies, guys. No one else in town remembers those cartoons. I know. It's, and it's, but that's why we're here. Right. To investigate that. And it that's why this, what was her name? Jess, Jessica, who was here? Aaron. Aaron. Aaron was here, too. Mm -hmm. It sounds like to investigate deep, deep like, and the, I mean, if something happened to her, something could happen to us. Maybe she found something out. It, I mean, we should, we should help Jenna out. I feel like we should, maybe Aaron found something that we're looking for. Yeah. Well, I mean, didn't it say she was, um. She was filming a documentary, right? So she asked somebody something. Yeah. Well, I would guess a lot of people. Well, right. But I mean, she asked the wrong person the wrong question. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. people. Is it okay? They're talking about us around town. I mean, I know this is a small town. I've been in a small town before. I've lived in a small town. It's dumb. But to, I don't know, give us a name. It's yeah, kinda, latch keys. That's Come on. It's cute, but. Colorful. Uh-huh. But still, my point is, guys, Captain Slapstick the Pirate existed. Mm -hmm. Those yep. cartoons existed. Maybe this tape can only be played at night. I'm just saying. Maybe. No, I, I, the logic checks out, even if it sounds illogical. And sometimes the most illogical things are the most logical, to be honest. That's what I've always said. And I'm sure that that viewpoint will never get me in trouble with anything. No, 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 absolutely not. Well, before. <laughs> Before we just go on pure myth and mm -hmm. magic and imagination, mm -hmm. um, can I see the tape and make sure that all the little nubbies and everything are in the pl right place?
and it looks like a bog standard VHS tape plaque. There's no manufacturer label. There is the there's a blank label that you would write the name of the um, of the show on the flat side. Oh yeah. It's, there's nothing on it, but on the on the spine is where it is it says affirmations 04. There's nothing weird about it. The little uh, tab is broken off so that you can't uh, record over it. Mm. It's the only thing that really shows that it's been even touched. And when you, Megan, when you pop it out, it ejects. Crystal, you're looking at it. Um, It's rewound. Megan must have been kind and rewound it because it's completely rewound when you take it. Well... Be kind to rewind. I look at Megan. Yeah, uh, good job. I mean, I don't think they're going to charge for us if we return it. We can watch it later now. I mean, there's nothing that's going to hurt us with watching it later. Wait, what? Yeah, I mean, we, it's rewound. No, it's not. I just ejected it. You saw me just eject it out of the, the compartment. I didn't rewind oh, it. One of those- is this I'll one of those things that, that automatically rewinds it when it gets to the end, though, and like it clicks and then it rewinds everything? I don't think it's that fancy. Oh. But, so I'm looking at the tape. It's all the, 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 the film on one side? Mm. No. Crystal, you were standing right here. You wanted to see the tape. I, I hit stop. I ejected it. I handed it to you. I didn't rewind it. The machine didn't even have the time to actually do the auto... Maybe it wasn't playing in the first place? Maybe. That's a possibility. Ooh. But yeah, it's blue say that, and Megan, stuff. But... Like it's blue and the thing in the, the yeah. lines. You heard the tape rolling through the machine inside. I mean, it's a physical machine. It makes noise. You heard it. It was playing. And when you pressed eject, it came immediately out. Because you, you can definitely hear it when it's rewinding. It's loud. Okay, so Crystal, I am going to step out of your way and let you hop into your lane right now. Please explain to me how this tape rewound itself. You rewound it? No, babe. Babe, you were standing right here. It, put the tape in again. Let's see. Right? Oh. Experimentation. Okay. Let's see if it happens again. I'll, I'll put the tape back in. We just Why played for a very in? little bit of time. Like, we'll count to 30. 30 seconds is more than 30 seconds of tape. It's the same thing. goes in. You can hear the machinery of the VHS or the VCR uh, playing the tape, the blue screen, blinking TO, upper right, exact same thing that happened before. Okay. And I am going to step away from the device. And I'm just going to go stand by Jordan. It's like, okay. Let's see what the tape okay. looks like. Yeah. I'll eject the tape. Does that little mechanical whine tape pops right out? It's waiting for you. I'll pull it out and look at it. All the tape is on the far side. Nothing's been played. I just slam the tape down on top of the VHS player or the VCR and um, I'll just go walk in the kitchen. And the three of you are presented with your first mystery, Lights, Camera, Action. Summary of the mystery is, of course, this letter. What happened to this documentary crew? Your question. What happened to the missing documentary crew? Complexity of four. So public access is a mystery solving and investigation game. You are going to try and figure out what happened to the missing documentary crew crew by going out and searching for clues about that. Um, You do that by making mechanical rolls um, to metal. And if you're successful with these rolls, then you get clues. As you collect clues, you can use them to try and answer this question. There is no canonical answer to what happened to the missing documentary crew. The answer is going to be the one that you three put together together, that you three put together, comma, together. Together. (laughs) As you discuss, hey, here's what we've seen, and here's what it looks like, and here's the clues, and I think each of these clues 
means this way. Uh, complexity four means that you can try and answer this as soon as you get at least two clues. And the more clues you put towards this, the easier it is. The fewer clues that you put towards this, the harder. Okay. Uh, if you try to answer it and you're wrong, it can be unpleasant to disastrous, but you can always try again once you deal with the results of your of your wrong answer. Okay. Okay. So we we have to find out what happened to Aaron, right? Like there had to be people she talked to, yeah. places she went. They were staying somewhere in town. Someone knows where she was staying. Um, they visited the caves. We've got that down. The caves. So there's probably clues there. They maybe went to like town hall for records or the library are also possibilities of places they would go to get information. Yeah. Keep talking it out. Keep talking it out. And as I'm as I'm encouraging Jordan to kind of stay present in this moment, uh, I am going to pick up the tape um, that Crystal slammed down. I'm going to put it back in the sleeve and I'm already thinking, I was like, how do I make a copy of this tape? I wanted to Crystal bring a second VCR that we can tie up to this one. We can tape this over to the blank copy. I wonder if we play it in a different. So I'm thinking through that as I'm encouraging um, Jordan to continue soundboarding off on like where we're going. Jordan, from what I've seen. They somewhere. They have yep. to stay somewhere. But we rented a house, but like they probably weren't going to be here long. And they maybe got, there can't be that many motel, hotels, holidays, and in, in, inns in town. Yep. And yeah. Breakfast tacos. Breakfast tacos. Yeah, no, we can hash this out over breakfast tacos. Okay. Okay. Tacos. We'll get a vision board together and then we'll launch. Latch keys. Um, I'm going to, uh, while they are cooking and, well, while Jordan is cooking and things are cooking. Yeah. Megan's being fabulous over there. I'm going to uh, open my laptop and start looking for hotels in um, Deep Lake that they might have stayed at that would have enough room for them and their gear. Um, and then see what where the caves are around here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You start doing that. Uh... Megan, are you actively trying to copy the tape right now? Or are you, is that just a plan that you're thinking about? That is a plan that I am thinking about. But if I have the equipment, if, I didn't bring a, an additional VCR, but Crystal may have. If it's here and it's able to be done, I'm 100% going to attempt it. Crystal, do you, did you bring a VCR with you? No, I have a camcorder. Hmm. Well, children of the 80s that worked with tape camcorders will know that you could do this. You'd probably record it onto one of the, whatever the camcorder uses. Camcorder might use a full-size VHS tape or mm -hmm. a smaller tape. So it's mechanically, I'd say it's mechanically possible for you to start working on this. If Babe? Crystal's willing to lend you a, her equipment. Babe? Can I borrow your camcorder? I'm going to see if I can make a copy of the tape. Sure, but if it only plays at night, what's the point of... You know what? You know what? I'm, I'm not even going to play. Here you go. Just, just, yep. Go ahead. Oh, I smile at the fact that you even are pretending to entertain that. So I will take it. <laughs> I will go in a separate room and I will attempt to go ahead and copy this over while um, the kitchen is kitcheny. Jordan, what are you occupying here? early morning with well i've finished making cooking finished mm -hmm. cooking, and then i'm making a list of places and people that i know around town to ask and in my head i'm thinking as i was about to type in chat yeah nothing's ever gone wrong i'm sure from copying making a copy of these blair witch tapes that have popped up um in town these tapes that you can only play at night that people talk about no one ever getting but sometimes people get and then someone just delivers it to your doorstep i'm sure nothing bad has ever come of that i'm just glad megan chose to go into her room 
alone to to do this activity get some privacy mm -hmm. i mean i wouldn't say it because i don't want them to know that i'm scared of being blair witched mm -hmm. um or being vhs taped so <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it but i am <laughs> side eyeing the entire time finishing up breakfast cleaning up breakfast and just jotting down notes of like different places that they would have had to get something to eat um who in town have we met the weird librarian you probably talked to the freaking weird librarian um a, a bookstore where they can get there's like that that roadside degoya county deep lake gas station slash souvenir shop oh god yeah they that probably one. went to get the souvenir shop and also some beef jerky just i would be writing down places to check out outstanding um you start writing out all the places that you've been, the three of you, or maybe solo, have been checking out and visiting and, and learning about as you were doing your investigation. Um, Bridget, if you want to, in the chat or however you display handouts, uh -huh. we could show maybe the downtown or we could show the full Deep Lake, New Mexico map. Oh. Uh, because we'll this is what Jordan is pulling and, and putting. It's these places. And Crystal, you get on your laptop and you are doing some very 2004 internet searching. Um, so I, I, I think you're actually hooked up to the phone to do this. You probably plug the phone cable into your laptop. There is a phone cable port right in the side of this thing is probably what's going on. And after you know 20 minutes of very fast internet browsing you made it you managed to get a couple few searches through there's a really only one real hotel in deep lake and it is the starlight motor lodge and you know it's right off of the main strip that you come in off the highway and that is the only official like hotel, motel, any establishment to stay at. You also find a couple play, uh, couple notes of people that allow folks to stay at their house mm. overnight and things like that. That's sort of still happening. Uh, but for a film crew that needs space and, and things, Starlight Motor Lodge seems to be about the best bet that you're finding. Megan, you sat down with a camcorder with the blank tape in the camcorder you've got the you've got six or seven cables and you put all the different cables together you've got the portal vcr you've got the and, and you're working this um this attempt to copy and so you press play and it's the blue screen and it's the flashing and then you press record and as soon as you press record the blue screen goes away because of course you couldn't see what you're recording it wouldn't wouldn't be enough power to do that. And the camcorder starts making its noise, its mm -hmm. mechanical noise. And... Flip it open a window, look at it. Mm hmm. You, yeah, it's a little, the little side window. And uh huh. That the... and... Yep. I've got a pin on my mouth going back and forth. And it is static for the first few seconds, just static. And you're, and you're waiting. Crystal, does this thing have sound, do you think? That's, hmm. That would make it probably really expensive, maybe, for the time. So it might not. Like, you okay. might be one of those that, like, you have to hook it to a laptop or to mm. the VCR to hear it. Okay. So there's no speakers in the camcorder itself. Okay. So you can't hear anything, but you're seeing just snow just tv snow oh or if she had headphones mm. oh let's do immersion horror this sounds delicious thank you so much for that tiffany you bastard <laughs> <laughs> megan from from the other room you hear you have to use your headphones if you want to listen and yeah god it's so good to have a tech person around like really i should be dating somebody a tech person or a mechanic or i'm going through a list of professions that would complement my personal needs as i put in my headsets and it's static and it's snow and it's just that no it's off air noise which is not the blue screen and the flashing letters that you saw 
Hmm. And then it sort of warbles and modulates a little bit. And this, this, the static starts to shift up and down in tonal range. And the screen moves from that static, just pure static, to every latchkey kid has that memory of watching the scrambled TV show that you didn't actually pay for, but you watched it because every once in a while, the thing that scrambled that picture would, would break free and you'd be able to see something clear. And usually as a kid, you were hoping to see, you know, a naked body part. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jordan, exactly. A butt or a boob <laughs> or maybe even better. And every so you start, there's a, there's a shift in the, in the snow and it gets, gets your attention and you start watching and then it's another little break in the snow and it, it's, it's, are they, it looks like there may be tombstones or something in a row. Maybe it's a graveyard, a cemetery, and there's another shift and you realize it's not tombstones. You think it's teeth and then another shift in this break. And in your headphones, you hear the sound of someone screaming through this static. And in that break in the snow, you see a face screaming, just mouth wide open. And another break. And then instead of the screaming, it breaks and it says, get me. And then it's more snow and static. And then another break and it says, get me get me and then it's more snow and then it's please please and then there's a pop and you you smell you smell ozone the smell after a lightning strike and a tiny little bit of smoke is coming off the camcorder and i need you to take the condition claustrophobic Holy and shit. you are shaken with a sense of being trapped and contained and unable to escape. And so conditions are yours to play with how you feel free. I don't have a specific mechanical piece until we start rolling dice. And if you're rolling dice and there's in some way claustrophobia might impact that for good or bad, then we'll figure it out then. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Um, my hands begin to tremble and shake and I am going to make a couple efforts to get out of these uh, headphones. Um, they wind up dropping to the floor, which is going to probably pull that cord and they snatch stick. out. They stick for a second, Megan. Oh, it's it's like they're, <laughs> they're attached. You can't get it. They're <laughs> clamping onto your your head. They're squeezing. They're, they're covering it, but then they come off. So I don't drop them. I throw them. If I can get them off of me, if they're, they're, why are they touching me? Everything feels like it's pressing into me, that it's pressing me into this moment. It's pressing me into this room. Everything feels very hot. Everything is very stifling. So it, it, once I pry these goddamn headphones off, I sling them across the room. The cord goes jerking off. I drop the camcorder. There's smoke coming off of it, but I can't. I just I think I just watched that woman die and I need to get out of this room. And I, I wind up backing into a wall. I'm sure a painting like one of those cheap, hey, we made a cute decorative thing for Deep Lake welcome photo crashes to the floor. I gasp at it as the grass as the glass just shatters and I spin and I am marching out of this room downstairs and outside. I just need to get outside. Let's get outside. I just need to get outside. And Jordan, as you are writing down, what was that weirdo's name at the Historical Society? Oh, I, there was some, uh, Marissa, Ma, Mara, Mara Klein Mara. was the historian at the deep. And then there's a thump from deeper inside the house. And then Crystal, you watch as Megan just runs, almost runs past you and straight out the front door, leaves the door open. It's already starting to get a little bit warm on this June 6th, 2004 date. There's the day. June Can I 6th. follow after Megan? Absolutely. I will I will I will rush after Megan. Megan, 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 what happened? What happened? What happened? It's okay. What's calm down, it's okay. 
I'm gonna walk up to the door and lean out and go, we're not air conditioning the outside as I step outside with them. Yes! Oh my god. Mom, yes! shut, shut the door. Yes. You're let you're letting the air out. <laughs> no, I wasn't born in a barn. <laughs> Our collective childhood is just all came slamming back. <laughs> I think. Megan, are you okay? What's what's wrong? What happened? It was. Fuck. Was it the, what happened? Did you see her? Did you see the Blair Witch? I I, fuck! You're still on the goddamn Blair Witch. Um, I. What was I think I saw that woman die. I oh, think. What woman? You saw a woman die. Uh, Aaron, Essie, what's her, Esther, who are we looking for? Aaron, Aaron Brooks. Aaron. I don't, I can't, there was, <sighs> I can ground myself. I'm outside. Outside is where I belong and that's my happy place right now. If I can feel it's the pads of my feet touching the ground, I can recenter myself here. It's okay, Megan. I can help you. I can do a nostalgia move to help you through this. <sighs> and I, I would like to do a nostalgia move by holding on to Aaron's shoulders and I go, Aaron, it's a, or not Aaron, Megan, Megan, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I can call me down. Call me to just eye contact. Okay. Just look at me. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Just listen to what I have to say. Making your way in the world today takes everything you got. <laughs> Taking a break from all your worries. Sure would help a lot. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes, Sometimes you, gotta you wanna go, go where, where everybody, everybody knows your name. Dun, and I, dun, dun. thank you, Crystal. <laughs> and they're always glad you came. And I will calm Crystal with a, my rendition of the Cheers theme song, which takes me back. <laughs> this is. I love this table so move. hard. It's your latchkey move. So your mm -hmm. latch, each latchkey has a latchkey move. Mm -hmm. Yours is what is what's it called? So my latchkey move is called "Thank You for Being a Friend." Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'll get to that one. Um, <laughs> it says I'm easy to open to open up to when you do the snout nostalgic move. The other latchkey can clear a second condition, which Bridget does not have, or take the condition feeling good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Which and, will give you uh, an advantage on a die roll in the future. And the nostalgic move is when you have an intimate moment with another latch key, while one of you is waxing nostalgic about something that takes you back, you may mm -hmm. each clear a condition. You don't have one, Jordan. Mm -mm. And if you're not the latch key waxing nostalgic, you also stumble on a clue relevant to an act of mystery. Oh. So it's a, it's a twofer. Yeah. So while this is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah. And here's the key. You tell me what that clue is. You don't have to do it now. You can, mm. you can let it develop. You can let it sim, or you, if you have an idea now, you can give that now. But that is part of the the nostalgic move. So, yes, that's pretty cool. I took this move specifically um, because I knew it'd have a great advantage. But with the downfall being that I would have to sing on stream. Um, so I knew what I was getting myself uh, into by doing a Takes Me Back being TV theme songs. Which, and... Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. I don't know, Tiff, if you knew this, but Miranda, years ago, does not sing ever. declared mm -hmm. never, mm -hmm. I would never sing ever, ever, ever. Yep. So. And we're hmm. singing live on stream right now. And well, and bitch. Well, okay, well, let's so... go. So there, there you go. You can clear your condition and take the condition feeling good, which will you can use as an advantage in the on a future roll at your choice. That is amazing, <sighs> Crystal. There is all sorts of nonsense going out outside this house, and all of a sudden, God. you swear you might might hear the Cheers theme song. Like Jordan might be singing. What are you doing while this is happening? Because this the nostalgic move takes some time. So they're going to spend 30 minutes, maybe an hour going through some stuff. What's Crystal doing? Um, I am now becoming a little suspicious of the tech around here. So I'm going to like look around the door and around like mm. in the corners, make sure there's like no ca sneaky camera stuff, like something messed her up and 
And and Jordan keeps talking about Blair Witch, but then there's the camcorder situation. She said she saw Aaron die. Like somebody's pranking us. Like that that's gotta be it. So for this, I'd like you to make a day move for me. Oh. Okay. And a day move. There's day moves and night moves. Right. Uh, day moves you do during the day. Night moves you do during the night. Right. Seems obvious. Or they're dangerous. This isn't dangerous. Um, but you're looking for you're looking for either con- something messing with you or maybe something watching you. Um, so the thing that you fear is someone is actually watching you. And so you're going to roll 2d6 and you're going to use reason for this because you're using your technology skills. And public access moves are, there's a tiered system. Okay. Uh, 10 or greater, you just do it. It's great. Uh, a 12 or greater, it's a critical success. You do it and you get some other benefit or advantage. And 7 and 9... You do it, but there's something that maybe goes wrong or messes with you in the future. Okay. So then I would add my reason, right? Okay. Yes. That's a seven. All right. On a seven and nine, I'll tell you how your actions would leave you vulnerable. You can choose to back down or go through with it. Okay. You, because you rolled a seven, I think you're going to find something. And what you find is above the door frame of that front door, you find a cable that has been painted the same color as the trim. And it runs along the top of that door frame and then down the bottom of it. If you go through with this, you will be get a better understanding of what that cable is and why it exists, but you will dislodge it in some way. It will be obvious that you have, oh. have, have found it. And what that means is if someone is actually checking on that, they will know. No, I'm going to go through with it. I want there you to go. know that I know. All right. So you follow this through and around and this cable. And at one point, when you're trying to figure out if the cable is actually going through a wall, maybe there's a hole in the wall and it goes into the bedrooms. Cause now all of a sudden you're like, Oh Jesus, three women rental house. Are you kidding me? But then in, in, as you look, you pull it a little bit away and it breaks a little bit of the paint off the wall. Very obvious, but you're able to confirm, no, it's not going there. It's going over towards where that TV was on a little table. Oh, God. Remember, Megan took the TV because it's sort of portable. And you find a small box that the, the cable plugs into. And there's no plug. It just goes directly into the box through a little hole that's been drilled into the side of the plastic case. Okay. Um, are there obvious... Um, like, can, do they have the tabs for the... Um screwdriver hole so i could take the case off the back there's four screwdriver there's four screws in the bottom so yeah you could definitely get grab your toolkit your okay. electronics toolkit oh right. yeah um, and and start and open that up and try and see what's going on there yeah that's that's what i'd like to do so you grab that um it's the work of 10 seconds to unscrew it you pull the case off in the case takes a little bit you maybe you run a knife around the edge because it was also painted and it was completely you know, you couldn't see it until you knew it was there. It was, it was well hidden in, against the wall. And you pull it apart, and, the, and the, there's a, a single circuit board inside, and the wire goes straight in. There's six wires, and they are attached to different areas on the circuit board. And you see a tiny little stamp on the circuit, and the stamp says Vista, and there's a little circle around it. Ooh. Okay. Um, so what would have happened is they're like out there singing and all of a sudden I just like get up and like I start like being like I'm going to end up putting like foil on our windows, basically drawing around the door frame, follow it inside. I probably left the door open even though I yelled at them for leaving the door open. <laughs> and now I got the TV, the TV open. Okay. And I'm staring at this stamp that says Vista. Mm-hmm. Is it written in the same font, like the Vista Visions? 
Mm, as a logo? Yeah. Or is it just like a cold, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a hot stamp on I it. I love that. Metal. I think, yes, we will make that. Um, it doesn't say Vista Ventures, but that Vista right. part yeah. with the circle loop, it's definitely the same uh, type the same face, thing. same font. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, And yuck, yuck, I'll yuck, say, yuck. Crystal, you spend another 10 minutes after this tracing through. You find these same boxes in each of the bedrooms and the kitchen. Okay. As a electronics geek, mm -hmm. the one thing that they seem to, it seems to be a closed network. They're all attached to each other. You don't find any batteries, any power sources. They don't plug any, you don't see anything else they're plugged into. That gives you pause. Right. But the one was on the circuit board of the TV, right? No, no, no. It was a box attached to the wall behind the TV. Oh, okay. 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 And then there's four other of those same small boxes. Okay, so yeah, so it's just, but the, but the cord started outside, right? The cord started over the door frame of the front door. Okay. You don't find any place where it leaves the house. You know, nowhere where there's a plug that plugs into a power outlet. Doesn't seem to be hardwired into electricity. Maybe it would take a little bit longer. Of well, investigation, but yeah, she's gonna be uh, quite upset and probably like moving all kinds of stuff, like everything into the center of the room, like pushing the dining room table and like, like I don't even care what these bitches out here are doing. Like mm -hmm. I'm moving stuff. Like this is mm -hmm. not right. And Crystal, I might start like pulling, you know, all of it out. You are gonna take the condition they're watching me. Oh okay. no! So there's a little bit of paranoia there. But also, as a benefit, they're watching me will allow, will give you a, a bonus or a benefit anytime you're doing anything to try and figure out um, if someone's watching you, if someone's following you. Is that same, the same person just walk by the window three times at the diner? Like those kinds of things. You're super vigilant on that, as well as being slightly paranoid. Megan and Jordan, do you just go, Jordan, do you just do one song or is there... And and Megan, I'd love to hear your response to being serenaded th with the Cheers theme song. I, I'm, no, I'm... I, I think I make it through the whole Cheers theme song, and then I'm like, okay, how how are you feeling now? Is that is that good? So there's some there's a progress bar here that's happening, Nate. It's I'm 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 close to having a panic attack. I'm just barely grounding myself and not to spiral out completely. And then suddenly Jordan jumps out and she comes with the, the Blair Witch bullshit, which I've been very patient about. I've been very non-judging and patient about. I like her. I like both of my housemates right now. We have a shared experience, but we're singing cheers right now. I just I'm pretty sure I just watched this lady die on camera and, and then uh, no The next part of that 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 progression is like this chick is really singing to me. In the middle of this front yard on a house that doesn't belong to us. And it's Cheers of all of all. And that immediately takes me back to watching Cheers with my father and me loving that particular song. And I, I, there's a moment where I'm getting ready to start singing with her when I stop and go, this is the absolute most ridiculous moment of my entire life for me to be spiraling out mentally. And this woman is singing to me. And then that adoration kicks in of I'm spiraling out. And this woman came out to sing with me. I don't interrupt her. My patience comes back. My grounding comes back. And I let her get all the way through. And when she asked that final question. Yeah, actually, I am. I'm feeling much better. Thanks. Okay. So. Crystal, just just hear me out. I connected the camcorder, right? Um it was blank on the television, but the camcorder screen, it showed me tombstones. But the, the more I looked at them, they weren't tombstones. They were teeth. Maybe this is the, the camera was too close to her face or she was self-recording somehow. Um, I'm not sure. Wait, can you come in the kitchen while you're telling me? <laughs> did you did you mean Jordan when you said Crystal? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, oh. sorry, Jordan. <laughs> Well, let oh, me tell you, okay. I hate to say it, we have some very cliche white girl names. I am really struggling oh. between Megan, Jorgen, and Crystal. <laughs> that's you that's why I have to keep it, looking down. <laughs> when I, got, I got Aaron and whoever the other one was mixed up. Yeah. 
<laughs> so like sorry. You crystal ball earlier. I was almost like, yeah, crystal yeah. ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. Sorry, I was talking to Jordan. I was talking to Jordan right there. That that generic uh, name of Caucasian. So yeah, so sorry. I was talking to Jordan. So uh, maybe she was she was filming herself. I don't know. I start hearing screams. I started picking up pieces of a face that I think might have been hers. Um, there was more screens. She kept repeating something. It's like, get me. But I don't know if it was get me out or get me away or get me under. It was just get me. It was get me. It was get me. There was, a, there was another scream. There was a sound that I couldn't identify. And, and then am I missing anything, Nate, from that experience? That is beautiful. And And, and then... And then everything, everything went dark. The camcorder started smoking and it just felt like the room was closing in on me. Sorry. Sorry. God, did I say I saw that girl die? I, maybe I didn't. There was just screaming. It felt, it felt like I watched her die. At least that's what it felt like. Sorry for freaking I, you out. No, it's okay. You, you didn't freak me out. I mean, if you try, I mean, that tape is fucking weird. So if you, you copied, I don't, I just, I don't. No, and and maybe we just need to refocus. We need to get in with Crystal. We can refocus, and then we're gonna we'll find Aaron. We'll maybe play that tape later, I guess. But now I don't know if we should. Um, but and then and then we'll be. I think we'll be on the same page. Okay. Thank you for coming to check on me. And if I haven't said it, thank you for cooking breakfast. Oh, yeah, and lunch welcome. and dinner every single night for the last three weeks. You know, the more I think about it, maybe it's not the Blair Witch. Maybe it's the ring and we could get the ringed. Quick question for Jordan here as I'm looking back down at my names. Has Jordan given me any indication over our time together that she does not enjoy being touched? Is she one of those people that just can't be touched? Or have I been able to hug her, hold her hand, bump oh, into yeah, her? No, I think Jordan would be okay with it. So as soon as you say that bullshit, I'm just going to lean in. I'm just going to drop my forehead directly onto your forehead and kind of just like nuzzle it. But I don't say anything as much as just like this patient moment of just like, just, yeah. Okay. Um, Yep. You're right. I am going to go inside and hope to God that I didn't fuck crystal's camcorder because i damn sure can't afford to replace it and i'm just gonna circle around her and then head back inside because i'm no longer claustrophobic because somebody came to check on me mm -hmm. crystal's nowhere to be seen but you hear some busy activity somewhere else in the house and if you go into your room to check on the camcorder you in did indeed fuck it very well and good you don't know if it was the smoke or if it was when you threw the headphones and it pulled the camcorder and then the camcorder fell on the ground, but the screen bit has snapped off and it won't turn on otherwise. Fuck. Okay. Let's, I'm going to go address this now. I'm not going to sit on it. I'm going to go address this now. I'm going to go hunt down Crystal. I'm going to pack up the remnants of her poor camcorder that she allowed me to use. And let me just go ahead and get this out of the way now. Crystal, what room do you think you're in right now? You've um, been tracing all these things throughout the house. Well, I'm probably in the middle of like probably scooting the sofa out of the way. And like I'm doing like, okay. So like when I was a kid, well, a teenager, I would move my own furniture in my room myself. Like, oh. even if I had to, like, prop myself, like, like my feet on the wall to push, like, my bed out of the way. So that's, like, the things I'm picturing that, like, Crystal's doing to, like, you know, get everything away from the walls so she can see more cables and, yeah. So let's say, Megan, you go to find Crystal and you're passing through. You get a view of the living room and then all of a sudden Crystal pops up from behind the couch. Jesus! Hey, what mm. are you doing? Um, so I don't know if you noticed, like when uh, well, no, because you guys were like singing cheers and whatever happy crap you were doing. But um, so there's this cable that was outside the door, and I followed it in, and it went to that TV that was sitting on the dining room table, and I opened it, and then there's this box, and it's the same, and it has Vista on it, and it's the same print or same font as the Vista Visions thing, but it just says Vista. So then I went to the walls over here and, well, in there, and then, like, there, uh, there's these boxes everywhere, but I can't figure out what's powering them. Um, and 
it seems like a closed circuit and like I can't find them leaving the house, but there's no power. Like somebody's been watching us. I think that tape was supposed to scare you. Give me one second, Crystal. I'm going to spin out of this living room. This crystal typically doesn't behave with this level of agitation. I'm going to spin out of this room. And I'm going to go get the team antidepressant. Jordan. Yep. What's the next TV show that you have that grounds people? Oh, um, oh man, it was just in my head too. Okay. Um, whatever happened to predictability? The Milkman, the Paperboy, the Evening TV. Hey! Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab Jordan by the wrist and move, and move her directly to Crystal. As like Crystal thinks that we're potentially being everywhere watched. Everywhere you look, everywhere. Worst song ever for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's the worst song. Like, I probably like stand up with like a handful of cables and stuff in my hand, like with these boxes dangling everywhere from it. Like you look at every... <laughs> I don't have time. What? What are you guys doing? And to hold on to. <laughs> that doesn't do anything for you. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. Okay. <laughs> but do you see these? Yeah. So one important yeah. part of the nostalgic move, both parties need to want to and wholly <laughs> engage. So I'm going to say Crystal's not into it. Crystal's no, not into it. No, that's fine. And, and honestly, I, I don't want to just stack up all these clues. Right. Uh, but it's good in the moment to still use the singing. Right. Yes. As is anyways. I, I would think that Crystal like has physical evidence in her hand, so she's not as like I'm going to just forget this because like look, foxes, cables. Okay, but you're saying they're not plugged in; they're not being powered by anything. They're just well, they have power, right? Can I tell that they have power? You can't tell that they do anything. No, oh. and there doesn't seem to be any. There are these boxes and there's circuitry and there's this this little breadboard inside and the wires go, but there doesn't seem to be there's no sensors, there's no little cameras or screens or lights. Or they, there doesn't seem to be anything else that you recognize. Yeah. Uh, but this might be an interesting place for Megan to introduce a, 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 a capital C clue. Could use that around these boxes. Maybe you and Crystal oh. could come up and then introduce an actual factual clue into the situation and that oh. will become real to some degree to a reasonable degree uh, so i am going to um uh clue share here with miranda do you have any fun inspiration that we could spin up here what's a great clue oh. that we can use to tie these boxes uh together sure off the top of my head Oh, Nate, you just served out this gorgeous menu and there's so many options and I'm not, oh, what to do, what to do, what to do. Oh, chat, by the way, if you have any great inspiration, oh, feel yeah. free to tee chat that up. Yeah. <laughs> what is a clue that we get from these boxes that are from uh, Vista? Oh, interesting, Chris. Chris comes with the boxes are passively recording, which could be interesting. Nate, I don't want to stall your storytelling, so we can always cycle back to it. But we will tie, we will find something fun to do with these boxes. That sounds good. That sounds good. It's about at this point, you know, it's later morning. So maybe 10, 11 a.m., June 6th. Um, I'm going to ask each of you what you would like to do with the rest of your day. And you can choose to do something together or separate or pair it up or however you want to do. But um, whatever happens next is up to you. So, Crystal, any idea what you might want to do the rest well, of the day? I was thinking that she's going to want to stay closer to the other two. So if they're like in a room, she'll be in that room. But like by <laughs> a window to like watch cars or watch people or the male person, or anything like that. 
So you're being, you're, it sounds like you're being imp- impacted by this condition right now. It's very fresh and raw. So that's okay. That's the priority. Um, Jordan, any idea what you want to do the rest of your well, day? I, was thinking, I mean, if we have time, can, I think we should go check out one of these places. I think we should need to hit the ground running either together or separate um hotel library that mara klein who's that kind of weirdo historian in town we've ran into a couple times the roadside souvenir shop i think i think we hit the ground running and if if they just disappeared their stuff might still be at the hotel at the um what was it called starlight starlight uh, motor lodge starlight the starlight motor lodge. lodge then they their stuff might still be there that might be a really good starting point for us Sounds oh yeah good. That was the idea I had once I found the starlight. Thank you for reminding me, Jordan. And Megan, what would you like to spend the rest of your day doing? Um, I am actually 100% behind Jordan on this one. So I'm going to get up. I'm going to get dressed in my kind of standard rollout gear. I will pack an extra jacket. uh, But I'm ready to get this this ball moving on at least let's chasing down the that one any clue right now because I can still hear that girl screaming in my head. And by the way, Nate, you let me know if we need to modify it all. But I think chat and I have all kind of come together with the box from Vista is some type of prototype. It is new technology that isn't quite on the market yet. We can recognize that as that. And it's emitting some type of strange signal. So it's not that it's capturing information as much as it's putting info or it's putting something out that we can't identify. All right. I almost get the impression like if you actually put the box to your ear, you know how you can hear a monitor screaming somewhere in your house? And it's just that very subtle bandwidth where Mm -hmm. you can hear the dissonance of sound. You're just like, what the hell is making that noise? And you're like, but if you turn them one monitor off, you're like, oh, thank God. It was that goddamn monitor. It's Mm. the box is putting something into the environment versus uh, capturing something from it. And I heard you. You said the word screaming. Do you think these boxes, if you put them to your ear, do they scream to you, Megan? Do you hear screaming? I hate you. That's how you feel today. Like a shell in the ocean. Except you're hearing screaming. screaming. Yep, sold. The boxes scream. They're emitting screams into the environment. I'm not going to say whether they're familiar or not. They probably are. Maybe they're not. But yeah, they scream. Your That's clue. how I interpret that frequency. That makes sense. Your clue, yeah. and this makes sense why Crystal didn't notice it. She didn't hold the box up to her ear. Megan showed up, twirled, immediately grabbed it. and Your clue, capital C clue, prototype technology from Vista that when held up to the ear screams. That's terrible. That you That's what you put together. <laughs> yeah, you did this. Thanks, chat. Love y'all. You're terrible people. Excellent. Yep. Oh. And Jordan, who's driving? I don't know why I said, hey, Jordan, who's driving? I guess it's Group me. who's driving. Okay, Jordan's I'll driving. I'll drive. What are you driving, out of curiosity? 2004. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, no, I'm going way back. I have a, a, I have a Pinto. I have a, <laughs> yeah, I have you do. an old Pinto, and that's what I'm driving. Hmm. All right. All uh, right. Because of Jordan's hip, and all my skater friends think it's super cool that I drive a Pinto, because it's very dangerous. All right. Right. Like and I, I press them with the danger. I like finding out that we're being watched, only to ride in an exploding car. <laughs> <laughs> Three of you pile into the, to Jordan's Pinto. She turns the ignition. Queen immediately starts blaring out of the stereo. You turn it down. Where are you heading to? Uh, we want to go to the motor lodge? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that feels good. It is. Yeah. Okay. We're all on board. Let's head to the motor lodge. Let's see. Off you go to the Starlight Motor Lodge. It's not too far away. Nothing's far away in Deep, Deep Lake, Lake until you hit the desert and then everything is far away so rodent decker to sundance down through down the main downtown stretch off to why did i give a street a name that i cannot pronounce i'm wondering that right now what, what street is it Archuleti? archuleti archuleti or archuleti because you love hurting yourself as much as we do and it's a real word, so I'm mispronouncing it no matter what. I like so Archulette. Gonna... Archulette. Yep. Down Sundance through downtown, downtown uh, area onto Archulette. 
and you pull off at the Starlight Motor Lodge, which is on our Chalette, directly opposite of Our Lady of Pure Waters, the yeah. major church in Deep Lake. And the Starlight Motor Lodge is a has a round driveway, and the cars all park in that round driveway, and the Motor Lodge itself is a giant U. There is a uh, a pool in the center part of the U, uh, in the same direction of it. All the doors face on the outside, and there's an office in one corner. That's clearly marked with a neon sign. It says office with a nice arrow. There are four or five cars in the parking lot. Not too busy. Not unexpected. It's June in New Mexico. It's a tough time to vacation there. And you park, turn the car off, the engine ticks. What do you want to do? head in and, and see if we can find out I mean they may be resistant to giving us information on he's staying here but this is the Starlight Motor Lodge so I feel like we can talk them into it oh god yeah the, yeah 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 we should be fine um this is off season it's not even off season in Deep Lake it's just whatever it is they'll 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 probably be happy and grateful for the company every uh, season is the off season in Deep Lake right um, the one thing I am going to do is, um, like, the thought hits me as we are pulling up and um, Jordan is parking. I am going to take that letter that was mailed to us and I'm just going to start rereading it. And Bridget is going to start rereading it during the intro of this scene. So just note that this is both me and my character rereading that letter. Sorry. Let me get my damn so glasses. all of you are heading into the office together? Yeah. All right. Headed, who's, who's leading the way? Who runs this show? Uh, we all three walk, try to walk simultaneously in through the door, and it's very awkward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a double door. We, we just all shove in. Mm -hmm. Nate. Because we're about female equality here. Nate. Mm. <laughs> is that what that's about? Okay. <laughs> that's that's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. I never realized it was about moving through a doorway. At the same time. The simultaneously. Same I, yep. <laughs> Fuck the, the ceiling. It's about the doorway. <laughs> Everything's gotten a lot easier. Just... Right. <laughs> wow. Uh, all you had to do was ask, Nate. You never asked. All... I just never I just yeah. assumed. I thought I knew. Typical. 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 You didn't male, ask. I thought I knew. I just needed to ask. All you had to do was ask. <laughs> um, I am looking at this letter. It's like, oh, guys, 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 guys. Just as a heads up, uh, Aaron Brooke. Um, we were referred uh, by Sheriff Hanscom. So I don't know if that will help us or not help us, but we were actually, Sheriff gave this lady our information. So that might give us some leverage. Uh, and right. as I'm reading through the list, I will continue to throw out helpful information, hopefully. And we're you have practically seen. Practically private investigators at this point. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, professionals. You've seen Sheriff Bill Hanscom um, a couple times at Tweety's Diner. You never talked to him, never met him. He is handsome tall he's got that square chin a little bit of a mustache he wears a a, a giant sheriff hat but he also he seems very kind and he tips tips well at tweety's diner and so you have a you have a specific picture of sheriff bill but you walk um three three abreast as they say in uh in class and walk into the lobby of the sunlight Starlight Motor Lodge. There is a little tiny lounge area with some couches. There's a reception desk. It's got the cubby holes where people can actually get mail. And each of the cubby holes has a little hook for keys. You know, it's that kind of place. And there's a one, there's a maybe early 20s, maybe even late teens uh, kid behind the counter, scraggly beard. He's got a little name tag and i think we're going to call him i think on for 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 megan's sake for bridget's sake we'll call him daniel oh thank you yeah. so much for another generic name <laughs> might as well call him mike <laughs> <laughs> brad <laughs> steven chad, chad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. what's his name i forgot it already daniel <laughs> <laughs> daniel mm -hmm. daniel there we go looks up he says oh how can i help you
Was there a film crew staying here? Oh, well, um, uh, and he stops for a second. He's trying to figure out what he's supposed to do, but this abrupt and just complete, just out of the gate, no nonsense. I think he's one, he's struck by your strong force of equality as you walked through <laughs> that door. So that Who was something that really gave his, his young mind. Uh, something to think about. And then you just threw that out and he's like, and before he can stop himself, he says, oh yeah, um, they were here, but then they left. Wait a minute. Um, wh- who are you? Why, why are you, what, wh- why are you asking? I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you about guests like that. Well, you already told me that they were here and they left. So you might as well tell me when they left. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Well, <laughs> fine. Yeah. Well, they had a giant trailer, like one of those silver, um, what do I call them, streams, the um, airstreams. They had a giant airstream. They only stayed here a couple days. Um, this, but this is a while ago. I only remember them because the airstream. Uh, my dad said those are real expensive. A while Look, ago? Yeah, like, I don't know, maybe like a week or so. Oh, okay. Oh, time for kids, honey. Okay. <laughs> Man, it was so it long was, ago. It was like yesterday. It was almost all of summer vacation. <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, he looks. He's like, I, I shouldn't do this, but I can't resist you. And he looks underneath. He goes, uh, I think they. It looks like they checked in as he checks his notes somewhere that he has. Uh, May twelfth. Yeah, they checked in May twelfth, and I think they left maybe. Three or four days after that, but they still have rooms rented. They they booked for a whole two month upfront set. Oh, that oh, would so make they sense. They still have rooms here. Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't seen them, but yeah, they've got three rooms. Oh, so you wouldn't mind um, letting us in? Well, I can't do that. Oh, well, I can call the sheriff since he recommend us look into this. Okay, yeah. Um, if Bill wants to come down and that that'd be fine. Of course, I wouldn't say no to that. But I, you know, I can't let you in their rooms. You could come with us, and then you would know we didn't mess with anything because you were there, right? Mm. It would just be you and us three in the room. Mm. I know what you're doing. You're trying to get me in trouble. Uh, no. This is my you're first not. job. You're happy to call. I think they still call him Handsome Hans- Hanscom. Um, <laughs> I never called him that though. Okay. Didn't you though? You could, though. No. I, mm. It's okay. It, I mean, it's fine. I, uh, I just, the people call him that. Um, but like, if I mean, we don't want to bother him. I mean, we have. Uh, we. I mean, we have a letter that says he was referred to. We he referred us to look into this. And I want. A meddling move for this. Ooh. So meddling move is when you search for a clue, conduct research, otherwise gather information. Technically, you, the players, would call, hey, I want to do a meddling move to f- look for clues. But this is definitely meddling with Daniel to mm-hmm. try and get some information. Um, and so one of you can do this. And it's going to be the same as the last roll, 2d6. And you're going to add one of your attributes. And I almost think your it's either composure or presence. It feels very presency. Yeah, I like presency on this too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, can we aid in roles in this? Or is this that not a, <sighs> not a thing? It's fine if it's not. It was just a question. That's a good mechanicals question. Yeah. Um, looking at our I don't sheets, know Megan hand. should roll for. We all should shove Megan forward. <laughs> oh yeah, Megan. Yeah. Just... yeah, Megan. Tell him that we're here because handsome, handsome, Le- sent lean us. over the counter. That's lean exactly what I'm getting ready to do. <laughs> and just tell him that it's fine. He takes Hi. a sharp breath as you twirl forward, and then he takes an even sharper dr- breath as you lean forward and say hi hi i I turn the fan that's on the desk towards megan yes (laughs) let the hair blow hair's blowing 
So when I'm turned, now that I'm like on spotlight, like, oh, wait, sorry, they're asking me to do something. I'm going to uh, hand the letter over to um, uh, Crystal. Um, and I am going to go, hi, Daniel. And I am going to lean over the counter, which again, at this point, she's just in a black tank top from the waist up. So this is definitely like cleavage is spilling over the counter. And she's going to look around for the land-based phone. And she's going to mm-hmm. pick up, bless you, she's going to, or I'm going to pick up the receiver and I'm going to look at him as like the half non-shaved of my hair falls over the shoulder. Like, babe, what's the off? Uh, what's the number to the sheriff's office? And I think that is a wonderful bonus or advantage role with all of that happening. Okay. So advantage is 3d6 and you choose which two you want to use. Fuck uh, yeah. Obviously, probably the higher ones, and then add your. It's add a your six presence. six three photo Ooh. is going into the Symphony Discord if you want it. <laughs> so that is a fifteen. There Wait, we no, no, go. That's a Twelve plus twelve. Plus, that's a thirteen. That's a thirteen. Yep. Oof. Oof. So that is a thirteen and a meddling move. Why did I call it a meddling move? I oh me! Wow. <laughs> So on a 12 plus, you find an Odyssey tape or you learn some unusual history about Degoya County. Oh. Plus. Um, so this is a big deal. So Daniel is, he starts to sweat and he starts to stammer and then he like holds out and he's like, no, you don't need to do that. And he tries to like set the paper down, but then he accidentally touches her hand. And then he just goes beat red and he pulls his hand back and he puts it in his pockets behind the counter. <sighs> um, yeah, you're new in town, huh? Um, Daniel. And he holds his hand out to introduce himself as if it's already had an end. I'm sorry, that's dumb. You already know that. Um, yeah, so they're in, he looks back, they're in rooms 8, 10, and 12. And oh, and they got mail, and maybe um, um, you can you can give it to them um, when you get any hands you uh, a package an envelope. It's a brown uh, paper package. It's addressed to the Star uh, Sun, the Motor Lodge. Okay. Um, yeah, I like I said, I haven't seen them. Um, oh yeah, Bill. It says, oh yeah, you you're official. It looks like you're official. So uh, I don't have any problem. Um, are you staying? Yeah, I, what? Do you need a room at the lodge? I could get you a, a room too, if if you want a room. No, no, sweetie, we don't we don't need a room. Thank you so much. I'm going to collect those keys and I'm going to hand those oh, to Jordan. I, I'm going to collect the I mail and hand her, it to Crystal. Like, <laughs> like we need a room. We do need a room, actually. Yes, yeah. yes. Is is nine open? Um, it is, but. Um, it's that one's far away from where they're at. Nine would be oh. on the, All so on the if you want to be close, it yeah. would be, you could have room six is open. Okay. 14 is, is, it looks like it's open, but 14 is, you don't want 14. That's a bad room. You want six? Yeah. Six is six would be good. All of you in the same room. Why is 14 a bad room? People don't like to stay in 14. I don't, it's, we're you get a lot of 14. Compl- you get a lot. You want 14? Yeah. Everyone, every time I put someone in 14, they want to. We'll try 14, Daniel, but I really appreciate the heads up. That's incredibly sweet of you. This is your first summer job? You don't have it's previous first... customer service experience? You're just no, good at I'm, it. I'm learning on the job. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, this is my first job ever. Well, you're wonderful. Out of curiosity, Daniel, do your rooms have um, like VCRs or do you have like a VCR here? That's a weird question because only 14 has a, has the VCR. Oh, cool. Great. Cool. cool. Totally <sighs> not Normal. coincidental at all. Mm-mm. I put my hand on Megan. Maybe that's why no one wants to stay there, Daniel. But that's okay. That's why we do want to stay there. It's just a VCR. He turns back. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he opens a drawer. And he pulls the key for 14 out of a drawer. It's not hanging on the wall. And before he hands it to you, he said, so everyone that stays in 14, and then they come back, they want a different room. Are you sure? Are you sure you want 
It's I'm not gonna, a good room. I'm going to take the key room. fob. I'm going to put it in my mouth where I'm just kind of like biting onto it and the key is dangling. And then I'm going to, while I'm still, and I love that John called out as a memory, like I'm 6'2". I'm a, I'm a, I'm a giantess. Uh, I'm going to stay leaned over this uh, reception desk and I'm actually going to write my name and my phone number down for him. It's my actual name. It's my actual phone number. I'm going to slide that to him. It's like, no, we, we really appreciate it, Daniel. Um, here's my contact information. If you need anything, uh, pay me that checkout or do you need it now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll call you after school tomorrow. And he takes the, he's taking the paper. I suddenly feel like terrible. Legal. I had like college kid in my mind, not like an actual teenager. <laughs> this is perfectly fine. Everything's fine. She I still wants connections or connections, whatever. In Deep Lake, it's fine. We're sanctioned by the sheriff. <laughs> sure to and be he fine. And he doesn't answer your question. He's he puts the paper in your paper with your phone number in his pocket, um, and he's looking up at you. He says. Um, you know, there's a, there's like a smoothie place outside of town. Um, if you, I don't know what you're doing tonight. Um, but I could probably get the car and if you wanted, I have to see if my sister has it or not, but if not, I could get the car and maybe, maybe, do you want to maybe get, um, um, do you want to just hang out? Do you want to hang out? Tonight, maybe after. Yeah, actually, I would. Assuming that we're, we're we're following up on Aaron and her crew, assuming that we don't get tied down or something. Um, if I'm available, I'll check back here. What uh, eight, seven? Mm, I get off at ten. Is the smoothie place going to be open at ten, Daniel? Oh, I don't know. I've never been out there that late. Um, I'll call and see. Yeah, I'll call and see. Deal. Thank you for everything. This is really sweet of you. We really appreciate the help. And I'm going to <laughs> excise myself from this particular situation. Um, and I'm going to turn around to the group. It's like, so apparently room 14 then. Yes. Wait, was he going to let us into 8, 10, 12? Oh, right. yeah. I have I the keys for that. Okay. Yeah. You've got all okay, the good. keys and you got everything out of poor Excellent. Daniel. Meg, I don't think they've, that key's ever been cleaned. You should probably like, um, there's some gum or mouthwash or something to, that's. Mm, I just had it between my teeth. It's fine. Okay. You're like, it's not fine. That's gross. <laughs> okay. Let's head out. Okay. Daniel, thank you. Bye, Daniel. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye. Um, I'll see you later. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can come watch something with us in room 14. You're a I terrible would person. Never <laughs> go into 14. No, we don't even clean it. Oh, I should tell you, we don't even clean 14. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Uh, we not. But it's fine because no one stays there. So it's never, it, okay, it's never dirty. Bye. And I think, Crystal, out of the corner of your eye, you catch Daniel as he does the, like, yes move behind the desk. <laughs> and so freeze frame. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and maybe he jumps up with his arms up and his and he's kicking his feet. Yeah, maybe and maybe it's one of those. He slightly pauses because it's so weird here in uh -huh. Deep Lake. You know, I, I had to think J frame. Daniel looks just like John Cusack in uh, uh -huh. Better Off Dead. I oh. think that's what we're going to get. Oh. And I'm putting it on the super official record. This wasn't the, hey, let's be super sexy to take advantage of somebody. Oh, Daniel was is actually it wasn't no she's genuinely gonna go hang out with him later if she can <laughs> as long as it's not some weird thing where I'm like calling out a 14 year old at 20 no, hopefully he's at least 17. 17 he's at least 17, 17. okay <laughs> <Yeah>. thanks <laughs> almost legal just wait it out a little while just yeah give him six months he, tur he turns 18 next month mm -hmm. his birthday mm -hmm. is July 12th hmm. and you walk um, the rooms that I gave you 14, yeah. 12, 10, 8. They're all on the first floor. They're all in that central part of the U. And so you walk over by the pool, and 8 has its curtains closed. 10 has its curtains closed. 
10's curtains twitch as you walk by towards 14. Someone is... Wait, that's one of the rooms that we need to go into. Someone's in 10. You sure that's not like that? I don't know, the, the wall unit blowing the curtain? No, I no, don't think be, so. We have the key. I, we're just gonna... I'm like looking for cables around the door now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Crystal immediately sees that curtain twitch. Her eyes are out on every everything, everyone that might be watching and looking. Mm -hmm. um, like when they go to put the key in, like I'll put my back. So I'm looking out the parking lot. And they're looking towards the, you know, like. Are we, are we going to go in 14 first or are we going to go in 10? What if that person leaves? Like we need to keep an eye out. No, I think we go in 10 first. Okay. I think so, too. Uh, maybe, hey, just as a thought, maybe we knock versus just like keying in if there's someone in there. Okay. They Deep see light. us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will, as they're, okay, just what, one second. Well, as they're going to walk, I'm going to jog down to the end and just watch the back to make sh if anyone tries to come out the back door. I don't think there is a back door. I think it's another room in the back. Win back window. You know what I mean? Uh, if I don't want someone, to, if we knock and someone's in there that's not supposed to be in there. I don't oh, even climb okay. out no bathroom windows. Um, so just, I've, I've, wa I've watched cops a lot in my spare time. <laughs> um, in 2004, earlier in 2004, that would have been like late nights. And so I sh I'm making sure procedurally that they're not going to come out the back. You know, I don't have to check them. I sh make sure I got some, run some good shoes on for chasing down a perpetrator. <laughs> Okay. Set yourself up uh, with a good view. The theme song to cops running through your head. Mm -hmm. Who's knocking? Bad boys, bad boys. I'll knock. For you, bad boys, bad Ma, boys. You see the curtain twitch back again. You see someone looking out. Uh, looks to be uh, mid 30s, maybe late 30s guy and he looks up and even just through the curtain you can see he's muscly he's stringy and muscly um and he opens the door and the chain's still up and he opens it up and yeah i don't think i know you what what, what can i do for you i'm gonna glance over the crystal and then look back and it's like hey you part of aaron's crew oh you know aaron you hear about aaron yeah. I haven't heard from Erin in, in, in like a week or two. Did she go off by herself? No, no, no. She went with the whole crew. You Are you from Vista? No. No. You... We're... Her sister sent us. She's worried. Her sister? The uh, the lawyer? The lawyer? Erin talked about her sister. Yeah. We're close. She's worried. Why? Because she hasn't heard from her either. Oh, shit. What were you doing on her crew? I walked. I quit. Oh. Once I told them, I told them that place was cursed. I told them they were fucked if they go out to that place. I what walked, place? I quit. I, the, the fucking, the, the film, the film site. I know the, the location. I, yeah, I, 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 I felt it. 30 minutes, I was out of there. Uh, I told them. It's this is bad. It's bad energy. It, bad, it has a bad smell. Everything about the place is bad. They got to get out of there. Aaron's gone. Aaron was a sweetheart. She was so. And he, you hear the lock slide and opens up. And um, you see a um, guy, as you saw through the uh, window, he's wearing a a a frame. Is an a frame t shirt, white shirt. Um, he's he's got. There. Yep, he's got a he's got cargo pants on. You can see tattoos up and down, and you notice uh, at least one of you notices the winged eagle tattoo that definitely is an airborne uh, military tattoo on one of his biceps. And he holds himself very confident, very strong. He says, "Oh, no, they went out there, and I, I was out there fifteen minutes and a half hour, and I, I I quit." I came back. I told him, you can find me back here. I'll do everything you need me to do here, but I'm not spending a minute out there. No one sees it. No one's seen Aaron. What about Lucas? What about, what about any of them? As far as I know, can you circle the caves on a map? 
and get us yeah, a whole probably, list of the crew. If you, if you have a map, come on in, come on in. Oh man, Aaron was a sweetheart. I'm come gonna summon um, uh, Jordan back down. And he invites you in, and he sits down, and he holds his hand, head in his hands. He says, "God, now I feel terrible. I'm probably the only one that could have done anything." And that's when you see the handgun that's sitting on the side table next to him. And he puts his hand over, and he grabs it, and he puts it in his lap, and he says, "Now tell me again who you are." And that's where we're gonna cut. For tonight. That is public access. Our first scene in session. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. I think we've got a off to a great start. Mm -hmm. And I am very excited to see what's happening for next time. Uh, and we gotta keep these notes. You have that mail that yeah. you got. Mm -hmm. that Derek gave you so do not forget that and I owe you another clue is the mail a capital C clue or just a thing that we have um, it's just something that you have when once you open it you can see what it is but you also have another capital C clue from me from yeah. you do from that amazing metal move and so we will resolve both of those at the start of our next session sounds good and that, friends Bridget. of the symphony, is where our show ends for the night. Wow. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who joined in or is currently watching the replay. You are indeed the best part of waking up. We sincerely appreciate you. Thank you for spending time with us. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, please consider helping the symphony to make more like this by backing us at patreon.com forward slash symphony entertainment, which, by the way, this entire cast is a backer cast. Thank you, not only for spending time and your creativity and your just horrific storytelling here. Thank you for monetarily supporting this vision that we're collectively building. So genuinely to the entire cast and to our GM, thank you. Hey, we hope you guys have had a wonderful night and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Check us out 8 p.m. Eastern right here on the same Twitch two weeks from now. Mwah. Night, guys. <laughs>